Hello everyone, in this video we are going to build this word counter with Django. It is a very beginner friendly project, so let us see how it works. We have this word counter um, and then we can see the number of characters we type in real time and then when we click on this count also it will tell us the number of words we have. So let us see. If I type in hello now, you see that as I type the characters are updated in real time and if i press count it tells me that i have one word in the test um, it is submitting back the test so it's telling me that i have 14 characters uh, because it is submitting back because but if i delete everything you see that i still have five characters in the test and the words also is working correctly so let's see how we build this in Django. So I'm inside the directory where I am creating my project. You see, I have my virtual environment turned on. So I'll start by creating the project, of course. So I'll call the project Django Word Counter. And then I press enter. The project is created so we can now CD into that particular directory. And then we can open it up in Visual Studio Code. But let us go back to our terminal and then create an app called Base. That one too is created, so let's come here and then register our application inside the settings.py our app is registered and let's also register the url so we add the include here so all the paths that um, lead to this is the home page you should uh, link it to the base.urls And of course, this base.urls is not created, so we have to create it here inside the base app. So urls.py, where we import parts from Django.urls. So from Django.urls, we want to import path. And then let's quickly declare our uh, URL also. So URL passes. which is just an empty list. In here we declare our, our path, so it will just be one path, the one that leads to the home page that will point to views.home and then the name also will be home. This is our path. So you see that it's yelling at us that doesn't know views. So from dot we want to import views. And then go into our views.py file and create this home um, view. We want to define home here. Taking in request as always. Then want to return render an HTML file called home.html or index.html, sorry. And that'll be all for now. And please, when you scroll down to the video's description, you should see the link to um, templates, not the link to the source code. The source code will be the complete code for the app, but the templates, there will be a link to the templates 
um, that will give you some three files, an HTML file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file. After downloading the, uh, the templates from the GitHub repository, you should be having some files like this. And then this files is what we will use, so I will want to drag them here. And then inside the base.py file, I'll first create my templates. And inside my templates, I'll drag my HTML file inside. And then I'll also create another one called static. For the static files where I will drag my JavaScript and my CSS file. The index.html file contains just this, it's just a form, um, a single form with the submit button, but we want to first load static here. And then in here, configure this one properly. Then down here to be configure a JavaScript file, which is also a static file. And that is all we have to do here for now. The JavaScript file is um, the contains only the logic that will update the character for us. So if you can see, I'm trying to get the text area, which, which ID is worse. So we come here, you see that the ID is worse. So I'm getting the element by ID. And then the character count element also, which is a number of words. That one too is here at the top, having zero as the initial value. And then, as every time on every key press, I get the value of the text area and then I determine the length of that value, whatever is in there that was retained. And then I'll insert the next new um, length or the new number I get for the number of characters into the particular elements that we are using for the number of characters that are um, on the or inside the text edit at the moment. So you can see here that um, on key press or on input, I that is on input for every input made inside the text area, I call the function here. So that's the function that is in here. That's all that it is doing. Uh, if you don't understand JavaScript, that's fine, but I don't think it is so difficult to follow. So now back in our views.py file where we are defining our logic. In fact, let us just run our development server and see if everything is going on well. So python manage.py run server. Okay, it's running. Let's see. Hello, this case is we have five characters in there, so we know at least everything is configured successfully. Now, inside our home or uh, view, this is what we do. So, the test we want to get a test by ID. So, we want to get a test on submit, we want to get this particular test from the text area, and this is how we can do it. We can say text equal to or let's first check if the person is actually posting. So if request dot method is post, that is if the user has clicked the submit button, which is also the in our case the count, then this is what we want to do. Then the text should now be equal to request dot post dot get we want to get words and then this one is only a 
we are only able to get it because we have this name here that says west so that's the name we are using to fetch that's what django we use to fetch the name and then now we can see the words equal to so this one will return whatever is inside the text box for us or the text area and then we can see words equal to a cr and then text but i can also choose to strip it from all five spaces So now that we have this, we can also calculate the number of words, number of words. By just saying that we want the length of words dot split. If we call this on any python string that contains um, words with spaces what it will do is that it will and we provide nothing here for the splitting it will split them on the spaces and then return the a list of all the words without the spaces so that are, that is how we are counting the number of words uh, that is in the text area so once we have the number of words that is in the text area we can I think we need this line, so all we have to do is to return this. But in this case, we will add a context dictionary that will be number of words, so n words, or n words should do so n words, which will have a value of number of words. Yeah. So with this, we can get the number of words that have been typed so inside our html file we look out for this this h3 that says you have typed this number of words so at this place where you see the zero we just replace it with the n words that we typed inside our view let me just confirm that we made it n words okay so now this should also work let's see if our server has reloaded okay we are, i think we are good to go let's just refresh it and then see so hello and then now we press it and it's saying that we haven't specified our csrf token so let's just go back and then do that so that is just a um, security measure that django has so that in any case we want to submit our form it has to make sure that we are uh, it's just not an attack on our website so we have to include what we call this uh, csrf token which is i think cross-site uh, request forgery you can read about it so csrf underscore token and then now i think it should work so hello and then we count we have to do a, a reload oh well, let's restart our server and see And now we see that it says that there are one words in the test. If we type more than one, so hello world, it gives us we have two words in the test. But our test immediately vanishes when we um, press the count. And if you don't like it that way, there's a way we can hack around it. Um, because this is beginner friendly, I'll try and use Python to implement that logic. But if you're okay with the test, finish, uh, vanishing um, that is also not a problem so once we have this words here we can also try and then pass in the words also to the the template so we can pass in words which will also be equal to words and then now what we can do inside our template is that inside the text area inside here just before the closing one we can also insert the words so that the words will also be passed back 
to the HTML file. Now, when I save it, come back. Hello world. I press there are two words in the text, but my hello world still remains inside the text area. So this is uh, at least the quickest way we can implement that particular logic in our code. So that will be all for this video. Um, the link to the source code will also be in the description. If you have any problem, you can check it out. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe and then leave a, a like also. And then I'll see you another time with another video. Bye for now.